Well, for more on this historic visit, let's bring in Cardinal Vincent Nichols, the Archbishop of Westminster, and also joining us from London tonight. I'm absolutely delighted to say we've got religious scholar and leader Marlana Ali Rizvi. Uh, good to have you both. Um, uh, Cardinal, let me start with you, um, if I can. Um, there are significant risks involved in this trip, not least those of security and, indeed, um, uh, COVID. Why do you believe it's so important to the Pope to do this visit now? Well, what he's said very clearly over the last few days is that, unlike the last papal visit planned for Iraq with John St. John Paul II, he, he does not want this cancelled. And he's just said it is so important, the objectives of the visit, uh, and he's going with the assurance of the Iraqi government that everything is in place. And he's determined, as he says, to make this act of love for the people of Iraq, for all the people, but maybe especially for the Christian community in Iraq. You both know each other, I know. Um, and as I understand it, uh, Cardinal um, Nichols, you were in Iraq in 2015. You were set to go to Najaf with our other guest tonight, Maulana uh, Ali Rizvi. And it's, uh, it's good to have you both on this show. Maulana Ali Rizvi, what does this papal visit mean? Um, I personally believe that this is a momentous and a historical event, and this will mm. make the two each other. It will send a message of moderation, dialogue, and respect. Um, it is going to cause the extremism and radicalism uh, to be weakened. Uh, it is one of the most important events, as I have not come across in the past thousand years, uh, that two such most powerful religious leaders are coming together uh, in goodwill to make the communities uh, become closer to each other. How, how will he achieve what you have just suggested? Getting communities to get closer to each other. He talked here um, in Abu Dhabi about human fraternity, about coexistence, and indeed signed the human fraternity document. How does he ensure that what was conceived here in Abu Dhabi actually gets action on the ground, sir? Um, just the two largest and the two greatest leaders sitting together, showing respect to each other, mm. visiting for the right three agendas and no gains from it because they have both reached the highest level of dignity and they've reached the highest level of their own religious command. Uh, so they have nothing to gain from it except for doing it for God's sake, doing it for the community's sake, for mm. humanity's sake. And this sends out a very positive message to the entire world that more than 60% of the world's population, uh, Christian and Muslims, uh, approximately um, more than 4 billion people, should get the message that uh, and in this difficult time, we need to support each other and be closer to each other uh, rather mm. than uh, being fighting against each other. Could I, the Christian could I community, a... Cardinal Nichols... Yeah, go on, sir, absolutely, please. No, I, I think I was going to follow what you were suggesting. I think what is very mm. important for the Pope's visit now is, firstly, that he, as it were, embraces the Christian community in Iraq and that he will do most dramatically mm. in the north when he goes to Mosul and Karakosh. But also that he speaks up for the Christian community in Iraq. And I think he will do that on the first day of his visit when he meets the state officials. Mm. Sure, he'll talk the language of religious freedom and mutual respect and the dignity of each person. And I think the fact that, as, as Mulana says, that he stands side by side with Ayatollah al-Sistani will say to the Iraqi people, we live together in peace. And mm. that's a tension that is in Iraq. For a, from a Christian point of view, uh, in a Muslim-majority country, sometimes Christians can feel just tolerated. 
but this is the this is the actual birthplace almost of the of the monotheism and it's around that that i think the two religious leaders will call for a deeper and more consistent mutual respect and cooperation on the ground and i think the gesture just the gesture from ayatollah al sistani is very 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 eloquent mm. We were speaking to Ben Wiedemann, who is on the ground uh, in Baghdad uh, and has been following the build-up to this trip. And fi he filed a report tonight about um, just how difficult things are for the Christian community in Iraq. And they have been, of course, over the uh, uh, past period, uh, particularly under, under ISIS. Um, but for a period of time now, it is a dwindling Christian Community, I, you know, one assumes that the Pope will want to do more than just talk the talk. He will, one assumes, want to see sort of action on the ground to ensure that what his what he says is actionable in sort of you know walking the walk at this point. What can be done, sir, to improve the lot of the Christian community in Iraq and around the region? Yeah, well, I think, you know, from my experience of being there a few years ago, when literally, you know, 150,000 refugees turned up in a bill and the Christian communities worked together to welcome them. Now they're going back to the plains mm. of Nineveh to Karakosh and Mosul. And the, the Pope going to that cathedral in Karakosh, which is just being rebuilt, uh, will will be an enormously important thing. And I think it will help to cut through the remaining tensions of different power groups that exist mm. still in northern Iraq and give solid presence and solid confidence to stay, to people to stay there. And I know the initiatives of the Christian community there are often focused on the provision of education, because if children have an education, then the families are likely to stay. And I hope this will strengthen the, the provision of that education on the ground, on, in those villages. And Archbishop Wardo, uh, the one of the local bishops, there is a great campaigner for this, and he'll have the full support of the Holy Father, I'm sure. Last, uh, last question to you, Marana. Um, you know, as the, the, the Pope will spend a significant amount of time on the ground, um, we know what his schedule is um, and we know what his message is. I was interested to hear from Ben Wiedemann tonight that there seems to be a, a sort of universal support across the board for this visit. Um, these are difficult times. Does that surprise you? Um, we are going through a very difficult phase, but I think um, mm. it is that initiative that he, besides all of the tensions and all the political uh, difficulties with coronavirus, has still made an effort at his age to go to Iraq and Najaf and visit. Yes, it mm. is very important for the Christian world, and I respect that very much, but I think mm. it is more important for the humanity at this stage where the greatest two leaders are coming mm. together to give the message that, yes, we're going through a difficult phase in this world, but there is positivity uh, ahead of us. And sending a very... Uh, uh, even for the political world, I think it will be um, mm. extremely important. Uh, and we will all be benefiting from his, um, from his visit. Um, and I respect him for, for mm. taking this initiative. Sure. This is giving out a significant um, uh, uh, right, you know, message for the moderation yes. uh, internationally. And with that, we'll leave it there. Uh, an extraordinary trip. He had uh, been advised by many not to make it, but he is making it. Uh, the Pope will be in Iraq soon. Thank you both uh, for joining us this evening. We will be right back.